Hello everyone, my name is Jess. I'm a wilderness educator and I'm really excited to talk to you today about tracking animals. We're going to have a brief overview of tracking and animal behavior. Tracking is actually not just about prints. Usually we think of the prints that we see on the ground, but there's a lot more to it than that. Some of tracking is about knowing the habits of local animals. We want to think about where they sleep, where they like to hang out, and a really important skill is to age the tracks, to see how old they might be. How recently has this animal come by? Was it today? Was it a week ago? Was it a month ago? Or even longer? So you want to think about what the weather has been like recently. When did it last rain? Okay, well, how does that change what we're looking at? If we're looking at mud, okay, was it always muddy here or did it rain recently? Then if it if it did and that created the rain maybe last week and now we see a really clear deer print in the mud, that means that that deer has been there since the last rain. And which plants have been crushed? So if we're looking along maybe a grassy lawn. If you picture your lawn, you think like, okay, I see that there's there's some pressure, something has stepped onto the grass and onto the dandelions, but maybe grass and dandelions just kind of get squished and then spring back up really quickly. So knowing about how the different plants behave, it's a little bit more advanced, but it's something to think about, you know? And how much did this animal weigh? Was it like a tiny dog? You know, have you ever seen a dog? like that big or a really really big one and how are they going to affect the ground you know if it's if it's squishy ground like we were saying about mud a little tiny dog how far do you think they're going to get into that mud probably just a little bit just on the surface and that really really big dog is going to make it all sink a lot and for other animal uh behavior questions like do they rub trees? Do they claw trees? Do they eat what's under the tree bark? Another good question is how do they like to travel? Do they travel on the ground? How do they hide from predators? Squirrels use branches to cross trees. And how do they stash their food? So these are all things to think about. If you're tracking squirrels today, you want to think about, well, do they, what do they do when they're scared of predators? You know, scared of something that's going to eat them. Are they going to be running along the ground where it's open and exposed? Or are they going to be um, finding something that looks safe to them? So what looks safe to a squirrel? So you really get into their mindset. I have a pretty cool video to show you about the squirrel. Do you see them jumping? How amazing is that? Those are like huge leaps. Can you even imagine if you were that size making those kinds of jumps? So this is just another great way to think about how you might be looking for squirrel tracks on the ground, but you're not always going to find them on the ground. That was a video I found on YouTube called Squirrels Jumping in Trees. The next animal I want to talk about are moose and deer. So they have a lot of similarities, but also a lot of differences. Male moose and deer both rub against trees. And in mating season, the males are leaving their scent where they rubbed on the trees. It's kind of like a phone number. They're saying, I'm here, I'm in the area, I'm just letting the ladies know. <laughs> and they have scent glands on the top of their head, so that's why they're just rubbing the trees to put that smell all over. Kind of like how dogs pee on things. So courting can be a really slow process that that looking for the females and them saying that they're in the area. So deer also rub trees when new antlers are shedding velvet. Have you ever seen um, a deer when they've got the new antlers and they're kind of fuzzy looking? But the velvet on there. And so when that velvet needs to come off, it's like, ugh, get this off of me. So they just end up rubbing on things. 
and their mating season is in the fall and during that mating season they get a lot more aggressive they will end up fighting other deer um, with their antlers on hind legs and all bucks that's a male deer will rub small trees that are about one to three inches in diameter so Oh, an inch, you know, maybe bigger than my thumb, three inches, yeah, maybe, maybe like here, maybe my finger. So it's going to be a different size on you because your hands are probably not as big as mine. But, you know, there are some small trees. Everyone likes to rub their heads on the small trees. But the bigger trees, only the big guys get to rub their heads on. So that's really cool because if you're out in the woods and you see, you know that it's, a deer that's rubbed on uh, a tree then you can see like oh this is a big deer and because of the way they do it like this deer that you can see you might see their their hoof prints right in front of there too so that's another way that tracking is really cool you can say oh you know at a distance I see this this tree that's got you know bark rubbed off of it well let's look closer and see if we see who was there who made that mark and for moose, their mating season is September to October, and they shed their velvet in late August. So, why do you think this matters for you to know about? Well, can you think of anything? Why do you want to know where the animals are? Well, what if you could come back to that spot and see if you can find them? Do you like seeing animals? Out when you're on a walk have you ever seen a deer have you ever seen a rabbit and if you could start to say oh I see the deer was here and a week before a deer was here too so maybe the deer comes here all the time and if I keep coming here all the time we might cross paths so I wanted to give you a little bit of a quiz what do you think happened here where I've got these arrows here Have you come up with an idea? This is from an animal. And there's this really interesting pattern on the left. What could that be? What part of an animal would leave like little lines? And in between there, it's hard to see from this angle, but those are little feet marks. So what happened here was that a duck flew down landed those are the little trail marks that's its wing mark and then it put its feet in the snow and waddled over to the duck pond and now we can see this photo it's a little bit hard to see but there are ducks in that pond so even if you didn't see the duck pond at first you might say oh i see duck tracks and then you could be able to follow that trail and see some ducks so what do local animals like to eat hmm well i guess like us if you you know, want to find some humans, you might go to the grocery store and you know that they're going to go there eventually because everyone needs to eat. So for deer, they like leaves, fruits, acorns and nuts when those are the right season, grass in the fall, twigs and woody shrubs in the winter. Sometimes you can see where in the winter time they've dug down through the snow. They've made a big hole because they're trying to find any little bit of woody thing to eat in the middle of winter. Thankfully, we have grocery stores. We don't have to do that. Here's a video I made for you the other day when I was getting really excited about some tracks I found. Do you see what this track is? It can be really helpful to move a light around and see the track from all different angles. That really makes one part really pointy on this side. One part is really round. And if we know this animal, we can see that pointy is the direction of travel. So it's got one part on one side, a little line in the middle, one part on the other side. Do you know what animal this is? Let's see, let's think about how far apart each foot would be. One is more on the right side, one is more on the left side. And here, we have two 
two footprints in the same place. This is a dew proof. So it walked here and here. That's called a double register because one time this track registered into the ground and then the second time double. Super cool. Have you guessed which animal's track I found in the snow? I found this track in the street near the forest. So we it's important to think about behavior like would a bison be near houses, near the forest? What about in Edmonton? Hmm. Well, I've seen them at Elk Island, but that's pretty far from Edmonton. They're all fenced in, so probably not. Okay. Let's jump around for a minute before we sit back down and pay more attention. Check it out. Okay. Now I've got a really neat video for you about deer. Look at that, a buck without horns. That's like it's Is this horns at? Are you kidding me? Wow, hey. That is intense. Deer behavior changes a lot with the seasons, and in mating season, they become way more aggressive. Also, important to note that deer have antlers, not horns. And we're not sure what happened to this male deer and why it doesn't have antlers. So, when we're looking at prints, it's still important to keep behavior in mind. What do dogs like to do when they're out for a walk? Hmm. Have you ever taken a dog for a walk? Or seen someone else take a dog for a walk? Okay, so it probably wants to pee on everything and smell everything. So... Okay, so they kind of maybe go like this. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. But if you have a coyote or a wolf, they don't get food given to them every day. They really conserve their energy. They go out and they're like, hmm, I need to get food now. And they travel with more purpose. So that can be an indicator when you're just looking at these prints. Like, the dog family all look pretty similar, but location is a thing. Well, are you deep in the forest? Was there a human walking with them? Or were they kind of all over the place? Or were they walking with purpose? Okay, can you guess who this is? These are some of my favorite tracks. That's such a cute little frog track! Another really cool thing to learn about is the categories of walks. So it's not just about having a footprint, but how do their bodies move to set that foot down? So there are different names for all of those, but if we think about it, you know, if we draw a straight line where the body went, then for, for deer, they're called diagonal walkers. So they kind of have a little bit of a sway with where they put their feet. And that's like humans. That's something interesting to think about. If you were tracking and you wanted to figure out where's the next track? I can't really see it. You could take a stick and measure <clears throat> the distance that you've seen between two other tracks and then put that stick on a track and turn it all around looking for another track because sometimes they're really hard to see. Sometimes it's the right angle, sometimes it's the type of um, ground that, that the animal landed on. So this really helps to find a place to to look. Okay, I want to know if 
you can see which which one's a dog track and which one's a cat family track so we have one side has claw marks one side has no claw marks have you ever seen a cat scratch something and then sit on you and maybe be like really soft and then start scratching have you thought about how their claws they don't actually stay out the whole time they come back in and with dogs just like fingernails they're just kind of stuck out there the whole time so that means that that shows up in their tracks too so dog when they're walking they have nails coming out in the prints if it's really clear um, because sometimes you only get part of a print you might just get this part of their foot or this part of their foot but generally if you see claw marks that means it's a dog family something but if you see no claw marks that's a good starting place that it might be a cat another thing is you can kind of almost make an x in between the dog tracks and the cat family it's all wobbly here there's there's three little blobs at the back and it's kind of rounded so Whose track do you think this is? Dog family or cat family? It's a dog family. Here's a video I made for you about tracking. So pay close attention and think about what might have happened. What did I do? If you need to, you can pause and rewatch. Now I'll show you what my feet were actually doing. Okay, so now I have an assignment. Grab a pencil, crayon, whatever you can use to write, and grab some paper. Pause the video and try drawing an animal track. It could be your favorite animal, a track you see often, or one that you're hoping to see. Okay, hopefully you've finished your animal track. Now I want to talk about birds. Birds tell you a lot about what's happening in the woods. There's a wilderness instructor called John Young, and he came up with the term bird language. So that means we can learn a lot from what they're saying. They have a song, so we kind of know a little bit about in the morning, you might hear some really cute little happy song, and it's different than when they're scared. It's different when, than when they're just saying hi to each other. So a song is usually complex, there's a pattern, it's, it's like music, and that's why we call it a song. It's also used to defend territory. They're like, this is me, I'm over here. <laughs> and that's also how they attract mates. So they might be like, see how pretty I sound. <laughs> and then there's a contact call. That's like them letting each other know where they are. They're like, hi, 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 hi. And they just kind of do that all day. <laughs> that, it's how they kind of know that everything's okay. No one's eaten their friend. And then alarm calls indicate a predator. So maybe a cat's going in the yard and they all want to say like, oh my God, everybody look out. And so if you hear that the birds that are sitting on the ground are scared, then you know that there's not a bird coming from the sky to eat the littler birds. So that's a cool way that we can pay attention. And if we know what kind of bird sounds like that sort of alarm call, then we know what what's going on in the woods. We can be sitting inside and we can say, oh, the cat just went outside. So if you want to find out more about um, a lot of that, I really love John Young's lectures on birds and the Audubon website. Oh my goodness, the Audubon website has so many cool bird calls and so much good bird information.
might be helpful to get a, an adult to help you look at that site because it can be a little complicated sometimes too. Okay, so the best ground for tracking, for looking at the prints, are snow and mud. So we can see these shorebird tracks. I took a photo of this on the beach and those are like little, little tiny bird feet that just hang out on the waterline. And I had my friend make duck tracks. <laughs> she has ducks. And um, I asked her if she could show me a picture of the duck tracks in the mud and in the snow. And she said there wasn't a really clear duck print in the mud. So she just picked up a duck and plunked it down in the mud so that she could get a photo so that I could share it with all of you. How great is that? And she also took a photo on different days because we we can see here that in the frozen hard snow, it's really hard to actually see the whole duck's foot. But in the other softer snow, it's a lot easier. You even can see the webbing between the toes. So this is really important to pay attention to uh, which days things are happening. Which What kind of weather do you have? What is the ground like? What's the weight of the animal? Because maybe a heavier animal would have still made a really good impression in that type of ground. We act really out of place in the woods. Our posture and our behavior is different than most animals. A lot of four-legged mammals walk on their hands and feet when they're just hanging out, and if they're getting aggressive, they want to be big and they want to stand on two legs. This happens a lot. So to a lot of animals, it looks like we're walking through the woods ready for a fight, you know? And so we scare a lot of animals away and we set off bird alarm calls. And these birds are sitting there saying, ah, there's something going on. And then all the other birds can hear those birds. And through this effect, we don't see as many animals when we're out in the woods either because everyone's been scared. Okay, now I want to show you the video of the tracks that I made for you earlier. This is after one day. So the weather warmed up a lot, and that means so much of the snowy track is gone that it kind of looks like it's been a really long time. So this is really important, and I would really like you to... Look at a track for every day for three days. Maybe there's a dog print outside your house or something, but if you can look at that in different weather, if you can see how it's melting, if you can take note, you should be able to learn something from that. So I just want to say thank you for joining and I hope you've enjoyed this and learned a lot. Goodbye!